get into this. You, Mr. Kaplan. Just wanted to bring to the court's attention that the wit next witness is going to be Mr. Rivera. I anticipate that he will be a lengthy witness. I'm particularly anticipating a lengthy cross, but that being said, this is the last witness that I have brought for the day, and I don't want to be in a posture where I run out, so I was looking for a little guidance from the court. Would it be okay if we end with him today, even if it's a little earlier, or would your preference be that I get some more folks up here? I don't have any doubt that he's going to at least take up the rest of the day. Okay. I think don't so, Don't need any other witnesses. Right? Didn't want to get in trouble. Is that all? That's it. Um, okay. Your Honor, uh, before Mr. Rivera testifies, if, there, if I could make just some legal objections that I don't want to have to do in the presence of the jury. You may. The first uh, objection that I'm going to have at this time is that it's our position that the state, even taking in the light most evidence to them, has failed to establish a by a preponderance of the evidence of conspiracy that involves Ms. McDonnell, so that at this point we would say that any co-conspirator hearsay statements um, should not be admissible because the court is, I'm sure the court is aware that the contents of the statements cannot be used in determining if there is a conspiracy, and at this point we, it would be our position that they have failed to do so. That's our first objection, Your Honor. Do you want to move before I move on to the second? Yes. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you want do you want me to wait for you to rule before I move on to the second topic? Certainly. Um, the, the second topic, judges, I'm just asking. I'll do an or a tennis motion to compel in terms of if the state is aware of any change in testimony by Mr. Rivero in in terms of what he's going to testify today. If they are aware of any statements that have changed, they are under an obligation under the rules of discovery to let us know before he takes the stand. So I would just ask if they are is, if they are aware of any, they just let us know before he testifies, and that's the second thing. Mr. Kappelman, the second Mark, issue. The second issue, I'm aware of my continuing discovery obligation and my obligations under Brady, and I'm not aware of any okay. new items to disclose at this time. Okay, and let me, let me say to counsel when I when we break, I always ask if there are any issues from you. What I want you to do is bring up issues then, so we don't have the jury sitting back there waiting on us. The idea is we'll use our time to resolve issues while the jury's taking a break, so let's try to abide by that. If you have an issue, you know who's next. Let's take it up at the, at the end of the testimony before we take a break while the jury's having their break. Let's have Mr. Rivera in, please. Have a seat, sir. Let's have a jury, please. All rise for the jury. All right, everybody, put the witness have a seat, please. If you'd face the clerk, raise your right hand and be sworn, please, sir. You swear to testimony about Jimmy's case, the truth, the truth, and the truth, that's God. Have a seat. Slide up the microphone, please, sir. May I proceed, Ms. Kaplan. <coughs> Sir, please say your name and spell your name. Louis Rivera. Slide, slide forward a little closer to that microphone, please, sir. Louis Rivera. L I U S R I V E R A. How old are you, Mr. Rivera? 36. Are you currently incarcerated? Yes, ma'am. And where are you currently incarcerated? Right now I'm in the feds. With the federal, feds? Federal prison. Okay. And are you serving a sentence currently for both this case and an unrelated federal case? Yes, ma'am. And what did you plead to in this case that we're here about today? 19 years. All right, but what charge did you plead to? Uh, second degree murder. All right, 19 years in prison? Yes, ma'am. And you're serving that concurrent with your federal sentence? Yes, ma'am. How long is the federal sentence? Twelve and a half. All right. And what did you have to do in exchange for your 19-year sentence in this case? Cooperate. All right. Yeah, I don't know. Is somebody tampered with the body? Every time we move this thing, it's up. 
Yeah. And Mr. Rivera, if you could pull up just a little bit closer. Yeah, I mean, I've been having a problem with some of the other witnesses. Not... Yes, sir. Go ahead and say something more. All right, Mr. Rivera, you said that you had to cooperate in exchange for the testimony. Yes, ma'am. All right, and what does cooperate mean to you? Say nothing but the truth. Has anybody told you what to say? No, ma'am. Anybody tried to tell you what the truth is? No, ma'am. Anybody tried to tell you any particular fact you need to include in your testimony in order to get? Not at all. Okay, in order to get anything? No, ma'am. Any benefit? No, ma'am. Did I ever have any private meetings with you before you decided to cooperate with law enforcement? Not at all. Did you have an attorney to represent you through the process where you cooperated and entered a plea in this case? Yes, ma'am. Did your lawyers ever tell you what you needed to say to get a deal? No, ma'am. Were you ever told that you had to implicate a specific person in order to get cooperation in this case? No, ma'am. Has anyone promised you anything other than what we just discussed, the 19 years concurrent with the federal sentence? No, ma'am. Have you been promised anything on your federal case in exchange for your testimony here today? Not at all. Were you already serving a sentence on the federal case when law enforcement first came to talk to you about this case? Yes, ma'am. And you also have pending violations of probation out of Miami, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. For possession of a firearm by a convicted felon? Yes, ma'am. So you have not yet been sentenced on that? Not at all. And is that up to a potential 15 additional years in prison? I believe so. And also a possession of cocaine with intent to sell, do you have that open as well? Yes, ma'am. And is that another additional 15 years of prison that you could potentially face once you're done with all of this? Probably. All right. And have you been promised anything in reference to those other charges out of Miami? Not at all. Where were you living back in 2014? I was in Miami. I was living with Jessica. All right. And was Jessica at 135th Street? 135th Street yes, in North Miami. Yes, ma'am. That sound right? Do you know Sigfredo Garcia? Yes, ma'am. How do you know Sigfredo Garcia? Childhood. We grew up together. And when you say that, was it like since you were what age? Uh, like five, six, around there. Okay. Were your families close to each other? Uh, they know each other. Did you grow up in the same neighborhood? Yes, ma'am. Go to the same schools? Yes, ma'am. Run with the same crowd? Yes, ma'am. Does Mr. Garcia have any nicknames? Just Tuto. Tuto? What, have you ever heard the term Tuto Dade? Tuto Dade? Yeah. Nah. What about, um, let me ask you, like back around the time that this crime occurred 2014 how often did you hang out with mr garcia during that time frame no, we hang out pretty close every day all right and you mentioned a jessica who's that that's my ex baby mama well, your my ex, baby mama. she's the mother of your children yes ma'am all right and that's who you were living with around the time of this homicide yes ma'am what about Catherine magbanawa do you know her yes ma'am how do you know her garcia's wife all right and is he legally married to her that I knew, yeah. You I thought mean, he was? Yeah, I thought he was. Okay. And did, do they have children together? Yes, ma'am. All right. And does she go by any nicknames? Just Katie. Katie? Yeah, we just call her Katie. All right. And was Catherine Magbano was somebody around, and I'm referring to the time leading up to this homicide, say six months leading up to the homicide. Is that somebody that you would talk to on the phone? No, Catherine I, Magbano? Like speak to her? Yes. No. Would you see her socially? I see her because I got I got to see Aunt Garcia. So when you saw her, would she always be with Garcia, or did you have a separate relationship with her? No, she would be with Garcia. I never had no. Okay, I guess I'm just trying to establish: Did you have a friendship with her independent of knowing Garcia, or was she just Garcia's woman to you? That was Garcia's woman. Okay. How much time would you say you spent around the two of them socially, them like as a couple? I mean, I was always around Garcia, but, you know, everybody do their own thing. Okay. 
Did you? Would you say you saw them socially more than ten times in your life? Yeah, of course. Uh, was the nature of Magbanoa and Garcia's relationship such that they were always together, steady, or did they tend to break up and get back together? They're on and off. Do you know what their status was of their relationship at the time that Dan Markell was killed? I don't think I knew that she was dating um, the dentist. That's about it. You did not know she was dating the dentist? No, she did? was dating. You did? Dating. Okay, so they were kind of off at that time. Yeah, they were off. All right. I want to show you some photographs, which I've marked as states 45 and 46. Ask if you recognize. How do you recognize states 45 and 46? I think we were going out to the club that day. Are these photographs? Yes, ma'am. Who are they photographed of? Let's start with 45. This one. Me, Jessica, Duto, and Katie. All right. And are these fair and accurate photographs of the four of you? No. Yeah. Is this a photograph taken um, when the four of y'all were hanging out socially? Yes. Yeah. Judge, at this time, I'd ask to introduce an evidence case exhibit 45. Any objection? None from the defense. None from Garcia, Judge. All right, it'll be admitted. Uh, only objection, Judge, is there's no time frame that's been established for that photograph. Do you, do you have an idea when these were taken, Mr. Rivera? You do you have any time photos? idea oh. of when these photos were shown? I, I can't remember. I can't remember. Sometime it? prior to the homicide that we're here about? Oh, shit. No, I don't think so. You think it could have been after? Probably after. Okay. No. Uh, objection? I'll just rest my objection on that, Your Honor. He says he probably he doesn't know when that picture was taken. Uh, I'll overrule the objection. Admit States Exhibit 45. And States Exhibit 46, what is that a photo of? Me and Garcia. And do you know when that photo was taken? <coughs> no, not really. Okay, is that the two of y'all hanging out together socially? Yes, ma'am. All right, and are the two of you, I guess if you know, what is your height? What is your height and Mr. Garcia's height? I'm 5'4". He's like 6'1". You're 5'4 and he's 6'1"? Yes, ma'am. And is that demonstrated in that photo? Yeah. Is that fair and accurate depiction of the difference in y'all's height? Of course. He just, I'm um, leaning down a little bit, but he's tall. All right. Judge, at this time, I'd ask to introduce into evidence states 46. Any objection? Yes, Judge. He indicated he wasn't sure when that photograph was taken. He also indicated... Uh, you have a legal objection. State your legal objection, oh, please. You can't authenticate those photos. All right. I'll overrule the objection. Admit states exhibit 46. You may Garcia, mm -hmm. Katie, mm -hmm. yes ma'am, Jessica, Jessica Rivera, no Rodriguez, yes ma'am, mm -hmm. me, that's me and Garcia, Was there a time when Mr. Garcia approached you about coming to Tallahassee? Yes, ma'am. And when was that? 2014. Okay. Do you know how long before the homicide it was that Mr. Garcia first approached you about coming to Tallahassee? A few months. All right. And what did Mr. Garcia say when he approached you about coming to Tallahassee? He just said, um, I got a job. He gave me a job I got to go do. He said he had a job? Yes, ma'am. And the job was in Tallahassee? Yes, ma'am. And did he ask you to come with him? Yes, ma'am. Did you ask any questions about what the nature of the job was, why you needed to go all the way to Tallahassee, or anything like that? No, ma'am. Why not? Uh, that's just my best friend, and I trust him. So you were automatically in to do whatever it was he wanted you to do? Whatever you wanted to do over the road. 
All right. Was money discussed as far as how you'd be compensated for this job? Yeah. Tell us about that. Um, he was gonna give me some money. He said, "Take a ride with me up to uh, Tallahassee, and um, I'll give you some money." Did he say how much? At that moment, yeah, he did. Thirty-five. All right. Thirty-five. What? Thirty-five thousand. You were going to get $35,000 for this job? Yes, ma'am. All right. And <clears throat> did you have another conversation in the car on the way to Tallahassee? Yes, ma'am. How many trips did you make to Tallahassee? Like tw twice. All right. And were both trips with Mr. Garcia? Yes, ma'am. Was anybody else in the car on either of those trips? Not at all. All right. Tell us about the conversation on the way to Tallahassee. Was this the first trip or the second trip? This um the first trip. All right, tell us about that. We were just taking a ride up there. <clears throat> my concern, I thought we were gonna go rob him. So say that again. And my concern, I thought we were gonna go rob him. You thought you were coming to Tallahassee to do a robbery? Yes, ma'am. Did you assume that, or did somebody tell you that? No, I assumed them. Like you know, it was just a job. All right. So you knew it was a job in Tallahassee, and you assumed it was a robbery. Did you learn something additional about what it was on the way to Tallahassee? Yeah, on the way coming up. Like halfway there, we just, he said we're going to have to um, kill the man. For some so kids. you were going to have to kill the man? Yeah. And what was the second part of what you said? For some kids. For some kids. All right. Anything else? What did that mean to you, kill the man for some kids? That's for a lady. Um, I guess the lady wanted her kids back. All right. So is this Garcia telling you this? Yeah. Did he have any information about who it was you were coming to Tallahassee to kill? If he had information for who we're coming to kill? Yeah. Yeah. What information did he have? He had a piece of paper. And where was the piece of paper? He had it in his hand at that moment. Okay. Did you see the piece of paper? Did you see what was on it? Yes, ma'am. What was on it? A picture of the the guy on... What's his name? Dan Markell? Dan Markell. The guy that y'all ended up killing. Yes, ma'am. That's the leading judge. Overruled. Is that the person whose picture was on the paper? Yes, ma'am. All right. And was there anything else on the paper other than a picture of Mr. Markell? I think it was the address in it, too. Okay. And who was doing the driving on this first trip? He was. Okay. And during the time that he showed you this paper, was he behind the wheel of the car? Yes, ma'am. All right. And do you know where the paper was stored inside the car? It was on the side of um, where you drive it by the door. Okay. Who was responsible for getting the car to go on the first trip? He did. Mr. Garcia? Yeah, he brought the car. All right. So you didn't, or did you, accompany him to rent the car for the first trip? No, ma'am. Do you know what your phone number was at the time of this homicide? I think it was like seven, either 786, I think it was like 290. Can no, your know? phone number. My phone number? Yeah. Shit. <clears throat> Man, I had two phones. Um, if I say the phone number, would you be able to say that was correct or not? Let me hear it, please. Uh, 305 570 Eight one five three. Yeah. That was one of your phone that numbers? That was one of my phone number. And then I also have a 305-934-6615. Was that a phone number that belonged to you? Yeah. Okay. And was there one number in particular that of those two that you took to Tallahassee? I don't remember which one I took. Did you definitely take one of them to Tallahassee? Yeah, yes ma'am. Okay. I want to ask you about the uh, first trip. Um, do you know the date that you came to Tallahassee on the first trip? The date. I can't remember, but um, no, I can't remember. Okay. Does June 4th through June 5th sound correct? Yeah, it was around June. Yes, okay, and that's of the year 2014, right? Yes, ma'am. All right, so do you know, are you familiar with a ticket, 
a traffic ticket that y'all got in the area of Gainesville on that first trip. Yes, ma'am. All right, I'm going to show you what I've marked as States Exhibit 81. You recognize States 81? Yes, ma'am. Is that a fair and accurate copy of the traffic ticket that y'all received on this first trip to Tallahassee? Yes, ma'am. All right, and this was in the car that was rented by Mr. Garcia? Yes, ma'am. Who got the ticket? I got the ticket. All right. Judge, at this time, I'd ask to introduce into evidence 81. Any objection? No, not at all, Judge. Not Mr. Garcia. No objection. Be admitted. What was the ticket for? Uh, speeding. Okay. And so you were doing the driving, at least in the Gainesville area, is that right? Yeah, we had to switch for a minute, and he told me to drive. Do you know what time of day you arrived in Tallahassee on that first trip on June 4th? In the morning, like around 5, 6 o'clock in the morning around there. Okay. And would it refresh your memory to look at traffic ticket was received? Let me see. Yeah, it was received on June 4th, 2019. I'm going to draw your attention to the top right corner of this traffic ticket indicates that you received a ticket at 9 12 a.m. in Gainesville, Florida. Does that sound right? Yeah. It does? When you came to Tallahassee that first time, did you have any guns with you? Yes, ma'am. And what guns were in the car with you on that first trip? We had two guns, okay. two 38s. Two 38s? Yes, ma'am. And where where did those guns come from? One was his and one was mine. One was whose? Garcia's. All right, and was that a gun that he acquired just for this trip or something he'd already had? He already had. All right, what about the gun that was yours? I bought it. Where did you buy it? In the corner. On the corner, so it was an, an illegal gun purchase? Yes, ma'am. Right. And was which one of these guns, if either of them, ended up being the murder weapon in this case? The one that I brought. All right, the one that you purchased on the corner? Yes, ma'am. And that was before the first trip to Tallahassee? That was the first trip. All right, so what was the purpose of the first trip? We came home um, to scope them out. Okay, were you intending to commit the murder on the first trip? It was supposed to, but um, we couldn't find them. All right, so when y'all came to do the first trip, was any money exchanged? Not yet, money. Who did? Garcia. How much money did he have? He probably had, I think, from two grand or five grand. Between two and five grand? Yeah. Okay, and did you know where he got the money from? The money he got it from the people that hired him. All right, and who were that? Who was that? Did he tell you? No, he didn't tell me yet. Okay. Did he give you any money on this first trip? Excuse me. Did he give you any money for this yeah, first he gave trip? Me a couple of hundred dollars. Okay. How many nights did you stay in Tallahassee on that first trip? Hmm. If you remember. I say like two nights. All two right. or three nights. Did you, where did y'all stay? In a hotel. Okay. And did you interact with a man by the name of Shadrach Nobles in the hotel? Yes, ma'am. And you said that you came here to do the murder, but you couldn't find him. What did you mean by that? Uh, we have followed him. and we um, Followed we who? Mark Hill. All right. Where did you follow him to? I followed him <laughs> all the way to a daycare. We kept losing him. Okay. Where did you follow him? When you say you followed him to the daycare, where did you start following him? Like, uh, we had stopped by a park and watched him come out of his house. So you <clears throat> knew where his house was located? Yes, ma'am. How did you know where Mr. Markell's house was? Garcia pointed his house to me. Okay. Was that something that was written on the paper? Yes, ma'am. All right, and you said you pulled into a park and waited for him. Where was the park? 
I was in the corner by a light. Recognize states 47? Yes, ma'am. Is this a fair and accurate uh, aerial map depicting where you parked that day waiting for Mr. Markell to follow him or scope him out? Yes, ma'am. Judge, at this time I'd ask to introduce states 47. Any objection? Okay. No objection, Mr. Garcia. No objection. Be admitted. You may. Mr. Rivera. Mm -hmm. Dot here indicate where you and Mr. Garcia waited. Yes, ma'am. Right. And when you had you already seen Mr. Uh, Markell's home before you parked here? Yes, ma'am. Right. And when he pulled out, did he pull out down this road right here? Yes, ma'am. Okay. When you're talking about the light, are you talking about this intersection? Yes. All right. Tell me where you followed him. If he came down this way, where did y'all go? Pulled right behind him, and he went straight. Yes, ma'am. And is that when you followed him to the area of the daycare? Yes, ma'am. All right. And when you say you lost him, where where, and how did you lose him? Uh, he had pulled him into the daycare. We just, by the time we made a circle, I guess he had pulled down and left. So we kept losing him. All right. And when you talk about following Mr. Markell to the daycare on this first trip, who was driving when you all followed him to the daycare? Garcia. All right. Did y'all, you mentioned going by Mr. Mark Hill's residence. Can you tell the jury exactly what kind of scoping out y'all did of Mr. Mark Hill's residence on this trip? Just driving through to see if we see his car, to see if there's somebody on the house, but we never got to see his car. Did you ever pull around behind the, the house or go anywhere besides other than driving right in front? Yeah, we went around the house. All right. Did you get out of the car? No, ma'am. Did Mr. Garcia get out of the car? Yes, ma'am. Tell us about that. He got off, went behind the house, tried to see if somebody was in the house. <clears throat> Who was supposed to be the shooter on this first trip? I was going to be the shooter. Did you make a suggestion to change the plan from shooting to something else? Yeah, if I know them for the kids, I ain't going to shoot nobody for no kids. All right. Did When you saw Mr. Markell on the first trip, did he have his kids with him? Yes, ma'am. All right. Why didn't the murder get done on the first trip? Is it because? We lost him. Okay. Did you ever observe Mr. Markell on the first trip where he was, I guess, separated from his children? Excuse me? Did you ever see him where he was in his car or in his home and the kids were not around that first trip? No, nah, he always had his kids. Did y'all discuss plans to, you know, I guess y'all went back to Miami, correct? After yes, the failed first trip. And did, was there any plans discussed about when to come back? No, ma'am. All right. What about between the two trips? Was there a conversation about the homicide or coming back to Tallahassee? Excuse me, what two trips? The two trips? Between the two trips. Did y'all talk about when you're going to come back or? No, when we left that first night, we left. We didn't talk about it. You did or did not? Did not. Okay. How did it come about that y'all came back? He ended up calling me, he said, you got to do the job. We got to finish that job. Okay. And did y'all return to Tallahassee on July 16th, 2014? Yes, ma'am. And how did you get to Tallahassee that time? We rented a car. Who rented the car? I did. All right. I'm going to show you what's been introduced into evidence of States 82. Yes, ma'am. Is this the rental agreement that you, where you rented this car? Yes, ma'am. It's a green Prius, right? Yes, ma'am. Whose phone number is this up here with the 
Can't remember. I can't remember. Who went with you to rent the Prius? Well, it was me and Garcia. He waited for me in the corner. I went in, um, gave him $300, and rented a car. Okay. Did you refer to Mr. Garcia as your brother? Always. Who drove to Tallahassee in the green Prius? I did. Where did y'all stay in Tallahassee on the second trip? Same hotel. Okay, I'm going to show you what I've marked as States Exhibit 83. <coughs> Recognize States 83? Yes, ma'am. All right, is that the receipt from, I think this one is, it shows an arrival date of July 16th. Is that your information? Yes, ma'am. Is that a fair and accurate copy of what you filled out to register in the hotel here in Tallahassee? Yes. All right, Judge, at this time I'd ask to move into evidence States Exhibit 83, which is accompanied by a uh, certification or declaration of authenticity by the folks at the Budget Inn. Budget Inn? Is yes, that sir. The name? Is there objection? Just to confirm, this is on the July 16th, 2014. That's the, this one, correct? Correct. Okay, no objection from Mr. Garcia. No objection. Be admitted. You may. All right, you arrived on July 16th, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. What is your name and address? Before? Yes, ma'am. I don't think so. It's not a real phone number at all. I want to talk about Thursday, July 17th. So you came, you spent the night at the budget inn, you woke up on Thursday, July 17th. What happened that day? Woke up. Um, Took a ride to my girl's house. It's that Thursday morning. And um, we went around the house. So we went around the house, we came back around, and uh, we seen a lady walking through. Mm -hmm. Where Which, was the lady? She was towards, she was towards my right hand side, towards his house. Markel's towards house. whose house? Towards Markel's house? Mm -hmm. Okay, was she in the street, on the sidewalk, or sidewalk. something else? Did she have children with her? Yes, ma'am, too. All right, what happened when you saw this lady? Did she see you? Yeah, she looked dead at the car. I was driving and uh, as I looked in my rear mirror, I seen her looking. Mm -hmm. So what I asked, happened next? I asked Garcia, what's up with this lady? Was she looking at the car? I asked that lady with the kids, man. So you asked Garcia, hey, who's this lady that's looking at the car? Yes, ma'am. And he said, that's the lady with the kids. Yes, ma'am. And what did you take that to mean? That's the lady that wanted the kids. The, the lady that wanted you to do this job? Yes, ma'am. All right. And were you worried about seeing her there? Yes, ma'am. Were you worried about her seeing you there? Of course. Um, were you concerned? Did you ever ask Garcia, who knows that I'm involved in this job with you? I can't remember. Can't remember that? No. Okay. What did you do once you see this lady and Garcia tells you that's the lady that wants this job done? We we drove off. We left. Okay. Did Garcia make a phone call about seeing the lady? Well, I'm looking to review a mirror and I seen her making a phone call. I seen okay. her getting on the phone. The lady that you saw on the sidewalk. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then y'all drove off? We drove off. Okay. And did Mr. Garcia, after seeing that and driving off, did he make any phone calls? 
At the Weedon Bank, like the corner, mm -hmm. he got on the phone. All right, and who did he get on the phone with? I believe he got on the phone with Katie. How do you know it was Katie he got on the phone with? Because she, like, the way he was talking, it's only okay. her. He, don't, he only talks to her. All right, and what do you mean the way he was talking? How are you able to tell? Like, um, when he spoke to her, she like, yeah, um, y'all get out of there. The lady just seen y'all. All right, and so y'all were worried about this lady having seen you. Oh, I was worried. You were? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And were you able, you said that you believe Garcia called Katie. Could you actually hear her, or you could only hear his end of the conversation? I'm hearing his end of the conversation right now. All right, and tell us about his end of the conversation. What did you hear? He said, we just got to go. Like, let's get out of here. Okay. Did you learn anything about Mr. Markell planning to leave town? Yes. That Tell us about that. We had to get the job done because he was supposed to leave that Friday morning. How did you know that? Garcia told him. And how did he know that? Katie told him. And when Katie told him that, was that something that happened while you were present or something that he already knew before y'all arrived there? No, I was present. I was in the car. Okay. Did you post a picture on Instagram while y'all were in Tallahassee on that second trip? Yes, ma'am. Could you tell the jury about that? It was a picture of an owl. An owl, like the bird? Yeah. Okay. And was that a photograph that you took here in Tallahassee? Yes, ma'am. All right. What happened after you posted this picture of an owl on Instagram? Garcia came and told me, hey, you need to take that shit down. Just like that. Garcia told you that? Yes, ma'am. And who told him that? I believe Katie. You believe Katie or no, you know it's, Katie? No, it's Katie. It's her. Okay. So did Garcia get a phone call about the Instagram photo that you posted? Yes, ma'am. And were you present when he received that phone call? I was outside. Okay. He came outside and told me. He came outside and told you to take it down? Yeah. All right. And did you all have contact with that same gentleman that you all saw the first trip, Shadrick Nobles? Did you all see him on the second trip? Yes, ma'am. All right. Could you tell the jury about the circumstances of coming into contact with Mr. Nobles on the second trip? Buying drugs. All right. And was there an issue with your car as well? Yes, ma'am. Could you tell the jury about the issue with the car? There was an issue in the car. Um, I was driving, and Garcia pulled a gun out and um, shot a hole right through the car. All right. What gun did he shoot the car with? Uh, the, the homicide one. The 38. The, the murder weapon. The murder weapon. The gun that you bought on the street corner. Yes, ma'am. All right. And I assume that was an accidental shooting of the car? Yeah, it was an accident. Where did this occur? Were you all in the parking lot or somewhere else? And I was driving. All right. Did it disable the vehicle? Of course. All right. So what did y'all do as a result of the vehicle being disabled? And this is the green Prius, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Go ahead and tell us what y'all did. Well, the car has stopped because he had the gas line. So um, pushed it right to the, to the side of the road, so like a little parking lot. Mm -hmm. uh, he left with Cedric to the auto zone and got a little piece of hose to come fix it up. It only took him like about 10 minutes to fix it. So Garcia got a ride with Mr. Nobles? Yes, ma'am. All right, and we're, who fixed the car? Garcia. All right, was he able to do that with whatever he bought at the auto parts store? Of course. And then it ran again after that? Yes, ma'am. And did Mr. Nobles assist y'all with getting a hotel room that second night in Tallahassee? Yes. All right, I want to talk about what happened on July 18th, 2014. Who was driving the green Prius that day? I was. Where did y'all go when you left the hotel? To Markel's house. All right, and was Mr. Markel, was his vehicle there? That's that Friday. Yes, sir. His vehicle, we had pulled, but um, we passed by. We didn't see it, so we went to the corner, the same spot of that park. We pulled it up and um, waited for him to come around. So once I seen him, we followed him. Where did you follow him? All the way to the daycare. All right. And did you see him drop his children off at the daycare? Yes, ma'am. And did you continue to follow him? Yes, ma'am. Where did you follow him from the daycare? To the gym. All right. And are you still driving at this point? I'm still driving. And Mr. Garcia is the passenger? Yes, ma'am. 
did you continue to use your cell phones once you got into the area of Premier Gym? No, I think the cell phone was off. I think, I can't remember. Okay. You don't remember whether you turned your phone off or not? Yeah, I can't remember if it was on or off. Okay. Have you seen the Premier Gym video? I've seen the gym. And you saw the images of that green Prius circling around while Mr. Markell was working out in the gym? Yeah. And was that you in that vehicle? Yes, ma'am. And Mr. Garcia? Yes, ma'am. What happened once uh, Mr. Markell came out of the gym? We followed him all the way back to his house. And have you seen the images that were on the bus, bus cameras? Have I seen the images? Yeah, the video from the bus cameras. Yeah, I've seen them. All right. And is that y'all b both before and right after the murder of Mr. Markell? Yes, ma'am. All right. Did, on the way to the murder, I see only your car, the Prius, turning onto Benton Road. I do not see Mr. Markell's. Why is that? We went the other, he, um, he went one way and we went the other way. And what do you mean by that? He turned before you or after you? He turned before me. Okay. So he turned to get to his house another way and you turned on Benton. Yes, the corner of his house. Okay. That corner right there by the park? Yes, ma'am. All right. And so when you were approaching Mr. Markell's residence, was he coming from the other direction? Yes, ma'am. What happened once the two of y'all were headed toward each other? He pulled in and I, I pulled right, right behind him. How close did you get up behind him? Real close. <laughs> All right. And what was Mr. Markell doing when you pulled up behind he, him? He was on the phone. All right. Still seated in the driver's seat of his vehicle? Yes, ma'am. And what happened once you pulled into his driveway? As soon as he pulled in, Garcia jumped off. Jumped out of the car and went around. Not around, but in front of, my, in front of the car. Mm -hmm. Right behind his car and in front of um, the car I was driving. Went to the um, driver's side and shot him. He shot Mr. Markell? Yes, ma'am. How many times? Twice. Did you actually see Mr. Garcia shoot Mr. Markell? Of course. Were the shots close together? Yes, ma'am. Can you describe Mr. Garcia's shooting position, like how he was holding the gun? One hand. All right. Was it raised up or was it like a normal arm, pretty straight shooting position? Oh, raised up pretty straight. Okay. And did Mr. Garcia, did you observe him touch anything in the, did he have to go inside the garage to kill Mr. Markell? Yes, ma'am. And did you see him touch anything inside the garage? No, ma'am. All right. And when he shot Mr. Markell, can you tell the jury anything about how close the gun was to Mr. Markell? Pretty close. Okay. Would you say inches, feet? Just inches away. All right. Did you see Mr. Garcia go inside the house at all? Not at all. Did he take anything from Mr. No. Markell other than his life? No, ma'am. What did y'all do once Mr. Garcia shot Mr. Markell? Got in the car and left. And who was driving? Me. All right. Which way did y'all go? The same way we came in. All right. Up Thomasville Road? Just, um, just they by the corner of the park. Okay, so you turned at the corner by the park. Yeah. And then did you turn at the light? Yes, made a right and just left. All right. Did y'all get on the interstate and head back to Miami? Yes, ma'am. Do you see the person in the courtroom who shot Mr. Markell? Yes, ma'am. Could you please point that person out and describe what he's wearing? Garcia. He's wearing a tux. A tux? Yeah. What color is the shirt? Blue. Let the record reflect the witness has identified the defendant Garcia. On the bus video that we talked about a little earlier, in the moments after the homicide, there's some like animated movement that's seen in the passenger side of the Prius. Can you tell us what that what that was, what was happening at that time? Oh, he's just trying to hide the gun. Who was? Garcia. Where was he trying to hide the gun? Right in front of um, the uh, passenger side. Okay. 
And what was Mr. Garcia's demeanor like? What was he acting like when he got back in the car after killing Mr. Markell? He was nervous. What happened to the murder weapon in this case? We dumped it. Where did y'all dump it? In the lake. All right, what lake? In a bridge, um, ain't no telling. In one of the bridges. All right, was it on the way between the Tallahassee way. and Miami? Yes, ma'am. And were you able to say exactly which bridge it was? I can't remember. But the gun was thrown into a body of water? Yes, ma'am. And who threw the gun into the body of water? Garcia. Did you ride around with law enforcement much later looking for this location? Yes, ma'am. All right. Have you seen the ATM images in this case? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Who's that? That's me. Who's that? Garcia. What car is it? The Prius. Is they in the homicide? Yes, ma'am. Sir? Yes, ma'am. What were you doing at the ATM? I was just getting money out. Why did you need to get money out if you got a couple hundred dollars already for the uh, murder? We, just, we had ran out. Y'all had run out of money by then? Yeah. Do you know which one of you had the first phone call once the murder occurred, you or Mr. Garcia? Garcia. And do you know when that phone call was made or where y'all were when the I phone was, call was made? I was, was driving back to Miami. All right. And who was the first phone call? Did he receive a phone call or he made a phone call? Shit. Yeah. I can't remember right now. And who was the fir first phone call with? Katie. All right, so Garcia either called Katie or got a call from Katie, and that yes. was the first call that either of y'all made after the murder? Yes, ma'am. All right, and was how do you know that that call was to Katie? Because he, when he was speaking, he like, hey, the shit is done. She goes, I already know it's done. All right, and when she said, I already know it's done, was that something that you heard or that Garcia told you? I heard how were you able to hear it? Because I'm in the car with him. The All window's right. up, and she's on the phone. So her voice was loud enough through the receiver that you were yes, able to hear her. And could you identify her voice as being hers and not somebody else's? Yes, ma'am. All right, so tell us again what exactly was said. He said, um, we're already finished. He goes, I already know it's done. All right, and then what? And then we asked for the money. Like, where the money at? So you'll get it tomorrow. Who said you'll get it tomorrow? Katie. Who was responsible for getting the money? I believe Katie. All right. And you said, why do you say you believe Katie? Was it Katie or not? Yes, it was Katie. All right. And did you know where she was going to get the money from? If I knew, not really, but we know the lady, Wendy, was paying it. All right. So you knew that the job was being done so that Wendy could get her kids? Yes, ma'am. Did you go with Katie to get the money? No, ma'am. All right. And when Katie said you'll get the money, what exactly did she say? I'm not sure you've said You'll get the yet. money tomorrow. You'll get the money tomorrow. And was that okay with you? Not really. I mean, the job is done. We should get the money today. All right. Did y'all go back and forth about that a little bit? Not at all. All right. So she's going to get the money and you were going to get it tomorrow. Yes, ma'am. And did you get the money the next day? Yes, ma'am. That's going to be Saturday the 19th? Yes, ma'am. July 19th, 2014? Yes. Your financial records indicate that you went to Big Daddy's the night of the murder. Is that, is that a place in Miami? Yes, ma'am. What kind of place is that? Uh, Big Daddy, you got a bar and then you got a Flanagan's right next to it. Okay. Is Flanagan's also a bar or is that something else? It's together. Okay. Yeah, it's a bar. It's a, um, a sport, sport bar. Is that a place that you hung out regularly? Not really. Okay. But you went there that night? Yes, ma'am. And what about Mr. Garcia? Did he go there with you? Yes, ma'am. Did you all spend some money that night? Yes. Were y'all celebrating? You can't call it celebrating, but we, yeah, we, we spent some money. All right, but you hadn't been paid yet. No, not at all. Okay, but you were anticipating getting some money the next day. Yes, ma'am. Did you know how much Mr. Garcia was getting paid for his role in this murder? Forty grand. Forty grand, and that's what he told you? Yes, ma'am. Did you know how much Katie was getting for her role in this murder? The rest. The rest of what? The money. How much money was it total? A hundred grand. A hundred grand? 
Yes, ma'am. That's how much the job was? Yes, ma'am. When did you learn that? My, um, I asked Garcia, he's giving me 35, <coughs> and he's getting 40. I said, how much is in total? He said, 100. Katie, get the rest. All right. So you said that you got paid the next day. Uh, tell us about that. I was in a barbershop the next morning. I get a phone call from Katie. Hey, where's Tuto? Where's Tuto? And Tuto is Mr. Garcia? Yes, ma'am. All right, so Katie, you talked to Katie on the phone that day. Yes, I did. And that was pretty unusual because y'all don't usually talk on the phone, right? Yes, ma'am, we don't. All right, and she says, where's Tuto? Did you know where Tuto was? Objection leading. Yes. Uh, Overruled. And where was Tuto? And Shrimp's house. And who's Shrimp? Oh, uh, his girlfriend. Okay, so that's a woman that he was seeing around that time? Yes, ma'am. All right, and what did she say? Did she say anything about the money? Yeah, she said, who's going to come get this money? I said, he is. You go get it. All right, so she wanted to know who was going to come get the money. Yes, ma'am. And were you able to locate Mr. Garcia? Of course. And did y'all go get the money? I didn't go get it. He went to get it. You he didn't get your it. money? I was in a barbershop still. They brought the money to my house. Okay, and did you go to your house to get the money? Yes, ma'am. Who was present when you went to your house and got your money? Garcia and Katie. All right, and is that the house that we talked about earlier that you lived at with Jessica? Yes, ma'am. All right, so you go, you leave the barbershop, is that right? Yes, ma'am. And go to your house? Yes. Who gave you the money? Garcia. All right, and C Catherine Magbana was, was present as well? She was there. All right, and tell us about the money. How was it packaged? It was in a brown, um, a brown bag. Okay. Like a brown paper bag or a plastic? A brown paper bag. All right, and what about inside the brown paper bag? It was like a little clear plastic, a, a plastic bag inside of it as well. All right, and what was inside the clear plastic bag? Money, all hundreds. All hundreds? Yes, ma'am. And did you count the money? No. How do you know how much was there? Because I trust them. All right, so you were told it was 35000 Yes, ma'am. And did it seem like about that much to you? Yes, ma'am. And you said it was all hundreds. Were they... Um, Separated it all into stacks. They were stapled. Stapled. A thousand dollar staple each. Each one of them. So stacks of hundreds stapled together with like a stapler. Yeah, with a stapler. Not mm -hmm. all of them together, but a thousand dollars each was stapled. Okay. So you had a bunch of stacks of hundred dollar bills that were stapled into stacks of a thousand. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Who is Anthony Ortiz? That's one of my friends. All right. Is that a person that would know how to find you? Yes, ma'am. All right. And did Catherine Magbanoa know Anthony Ortiz? Yeah. And do you know his number, or if I say his number, would you be able to say yes or no that that's his number? Yeah. 305-762-0648. That's his number. Did you get any additional money other for this murder other than the money that you got in that brown paper bag? Yeah, he gave me an extra two grand. Who did? Garcia. When was that? In the car. <coughs> you say in the car. Was that the same day that you got the 35 grand? Yes, ma'am. Are you aware of any purchases that Mr. Garcia made with his portion of the money from this murder? Yes, ma'am. And what purchases were those? Uh, we just bought some toys. Like what? Like cars, motorcycles. What about you? Did you buy any toys? Yeah, I bought a motorcycle. Okay, I'm going to approach with States Exhibits 48. Start with 48. Do you recognize that exhibit? Yes, ma'am. How do you recognize it? Let's go see his motorcycle and the Monte Carlo is his. All right. Uh, is this a fair and accurate photo of the toys that he bought with the proceeds of this murder? Yes, ma'am. 
Judge, at this time, I'd ask to introduce States 48. Any objection? Judge, if I may. You might. Pictures of the mothers. I'm going to object to the authentication. Mr. Uh... Oh, look, rule. That's the judge. Mr. Baird, 064, he doesn't show up. No objection. You may. Mr. Baird, there's a couple motorcycles in this photo. Did Mr. Baird purchase both of those? No, just one. Which one? The yellow one. The yellow and black one. The one in the front? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. States Exhibit 49, do you recognize that? Yes, ma'am. What does that show? Me and Garcia on the motorcycles. All right, are those the motorcycles y'all bought with the money from killing Mr. Markell? Yes, ma'am. Judge, at this time, I'd ask to move in evidence States 49. Any objections? No objections. No objections. They'll be admitted. 49, Do you know what Catherine Magbanawa did with her cut of the money? Not really. Did you dump your phone, the phone that you took to Tallahassee? Did you dump that phone after the murder? No, I think I just changed the number. Changed the number? And did you change the number because it might have been associated with a homicide? Yes, ma'am. What happened to the Prius? Well, we turned it back. The Who Prius? turned it back in? I turned it back in. And was it turned in on time? No. Tell us about that. Well, Garcia used it at night, went out. He took the Prius, parked it somewhere around the house. He said he lost it. He said he didn't know where he put it at. So I had to go over there and look for it. Found it like like a block and a half away from where he lived at, in Miami right. Beach. Miami Beach? Yeah. And so the Prius was a few days late, right? Yeah. Are you familiar with a wire intercept, a T3 wire intercept that was done in reference to this case? Mm -hmm. Not really. Have you had an opportunity to review some recorded calls that were captured on a, a disc? I heard it from one of my own girls. Say that again? I heard, I heard it before. Okay. Were you, did you remember coming and listening with Investigator Newland to some phone calls and initialing whether or not you knew who the voices were on those calls? Wait, who? Newman? Newland, Investigator Jason Newland. Did you meet with him? Yeah, I met with him. Okay, and did he play some phone calls for you? And the gist of that was asking you, can you recognize the voices yes. on these calls? You remember that? Yes, ma'am. All right, I'm going to approach with States Exhibit 138. Moment, please, All right, jury needs to take a break. We'll take 10 minutes.